In this experiment, we're going to learn about the attraction of polar and nonpolar molecules to static electricity. And so I've got a setup where I'm gonna start with a styrofoam cup and I'm gonna take a pin and poke a hole in the bottom of the cup. You don't want the hole to be very large. You want it just to be small enough that when fluid flows through it, then it flows in a thin stream and doesn't bubble or move around. So I'm gonna try just a single poke. We may have to adjust it, but let's just try with that. And now I'm gonna take a balloon and blow it up, tie it off. There we go. All right, I'm gonna keep the balloon nearby. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pour water into the cup and let's just see how it flows out. If it's flowing in a nice stream, then I'm gonna start the experiment using the balloon and creating a static charge. Um, if it's not, I'm gonna put it down and we're gonna fix that hole to make sure it's the way we want it to go. So let's try this, putting this in the water, or water in the cup. Oh yeah, we're getting a nice stream. Okay, now I'm gonna take the balloon and I'm gonna rub it in my hair to get a static charge. You can see my hair sticking to the balloon. Now watch the stream of water as I bring the balloon close to the stream. You see that? Try it again. Do you see how the stream is moving toward the balloon? All right, now close that up and dump it in the sink. We're going to try the same experiment. This time, we're gonna do it with some oil. I got some water on my hair, so I wanna make sure I remove that water because that won't help us build the static electricity uh, in our balloon. Okay, so now I'm going to add vegetable oil to the cup. You can see it's making a nice little stream. The same thing I did with the water. Mess up my hair nice and frizzy. Okay, now I'm gonna hold it close and watch the stream. Let's do it again. It's not moving. It does jumble a bit, but I think that's more coincidental. Yeah, do you see how it's not moving? It's just maintaining that straight movement straight down. Okay, so in light of polar molecules and nonpolar molecules, water is a polar molecule. I'm gonna pour this right back in. And oil is a nonpolar molecule. So in the discussion that you're going to write about in this experiment, you wanna use the word polarity and you wanna talk about how a polar molecule is affected by static electric charge and a nonpolar molecule is affected, if at all, by a static electric charge. But we'll talk more about those details in the next section. Let's talk about what happened in the experiment. When you rubbed the balloon in your hair, the balloon picked up available negative charges from the atoms that make up your hair, giving that side of the balloon an overall negative charge. You then brought the charge balloon close to a thin stream of water, and you should have seen the stream bend toward the balloon. Next, you brought the charged balloon near a thin stream of oil, but you should have seen that the oil was not affected by the balloon's charge. Why is that? Well, it has to do with water's polarity. As you brought the negatively charged balloon near the polar water, the positively charged areas of the water molecules, namely the hydrogen atoms, were attracted to the balloon. Because the water was in liquid form, the stream enabled the water molecules to move around. So that's why the stream bent toward the balloon. The slight positive charges of the hydrogens in the water were attracted to the negative charges of the balloon. The stream couldn't bend very far though, because gravity was still causing the molecules to flow downward. And that's why when you removed the balloon, the stream continued to flow straight down again. The stream of oil wasn't affected by the charged balloon because oil molecules are not polar. 
they have no negative or positive ends. So they were only affected by the pull of gravity and flowed straight down. <laughs>